Well, now to this. A 12-year-old girl is now hospitalized in fair condition after being shot over the weekend downtown where large crowds of young people had gathered. Her mother says the girl was supposed to be elsewhere. W Her mother says the girl was supposed to be elsewhere. Now, listen, I was a kid, and I remember those days. You tell your parents you go in one place and you go another place. A 12-year-old girl was shot downtown while a she was amongst a mob of marauding teens that were pillaging, destroying, and ravaging like one of those scenes where you see a time lapse of ants like eating a piece of fruit or some kind of piece of food that's been discarded and they time they they recorded and time lapse it. That's how these kids are descending on the downtown areas of these cities now. And they're as young as twelve and they're girls, a lot of them. Well, now to this, a 12-year-old girl is now hospitalized in fair condition after being shot over the weekend downtown where large crowds of young people had gathered. Her mother says the girl was supposed to be elsewhere. WGN's Patrick Elwood is at Comer Children's Hospital where she's recovering with more on our story. Pat? Dina and Ray, good evening to you. In the melee that erupted at Millennium Park Saturday night, a 12-year-old girl was shot. She continues to recover here at Comer Children's Hospital, but much to her mother's surprise, she didn't even know what happened until two days later, as she explains. So your daughter gets shot downtown, in the scene I just described, and you don't find out for two days. Listen, man, in these communities, these kids are feral, okay? These are feral kids. These kids do what they want to do, okay? That's why when you run into them, hit one if you saw the video I did on the teen carjackers, a little girl... I think she was 14 years old or something. She just carjacks people all. She used carjacking as public transportation. To get from here to there, she just carjacks people. These kids in these cities are feral. Okay? A 12-year-old girl was shot. She continues to recover here at Comer Children's Hospital. But much to her mother's surprise, she didn't even know what happened until two days later, as she explains. <laughs> Millennium Park Saturday night. And it is here, in this moment, where a gunman is seen firing off a shot that hit 12-year-old Jada Jones. God kept my baby covered there. Ruth God kept the baby covered. Okay, I'll give you that. But why, if God loved that baby so much, why does he put him put her in your hands and why did he put her in Chicago? Hmm? It's just a question, man. God kept my baby covered in. Ruthie is Jada's mother. She says her daughter did not have permission to be at Millennium Park and believes that the gunman was just randomly shooting into a crowd. I had no... Remember I told you? I told you this weeks ago, Sun Men are going to start pushing the envelope because there's no pushback, there's no backlash. They're wait, they're like children, like like my little daughter. She 
she'll go somewhere where she's not supposed to be or do something she's not supposed to be and look at me. And she wants to know, can I do this? And I got to come, well, no, you can't do that. Sun men are waiting for discipline and it's not coming. So they're going to keep pushing the envelope. And one of the things you're going to start seeing now is random shooting. We already got the carjacking. We got the drive-bys. We got the knockout game. We got the home invasion. We got the robberies. We got all the violent crime you could want. But because there's no pushback, there's no crime bill, there's no vigilante justice, mass vigilante justice, you're going to start seeing them just... And I'm talking about the criminal element, the thug element of them. Just start shooting people. Why not? And I know you're like, well, that makes no sense. They're going to start doing it. I told you this a while ago. Just like I told you in the spring, the roads is going to get dangerous. And look, we covered this on the live stream the other day. And make sure you join me every Friday and Tuesday, or Tuesday and Friday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come join the live stream. Talk to me directly. Hit the StreamYard link. We talked about this, man. And a lot of people don't think there's any backlash coming anytime soon. They think that they're just going to be running in stores, stealing whatever they want for the next <clears throat> for the next 10 years. <laughs> they just be murdering people. And I'm telling you, they're going to just start shooting people. Because there's... N you got to understand how the, the, that brain operates, man. It's just going to keep on going and going and going until it stopped. Okay? So you 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 use your imagination. I've been talking a lot about reimagining everything. Reimagine what Sun Men going to be like in 2 years if there's no backlash. If there's no crime bill 2.0. Millennium Park Saturday night, and it is here in this moment where a gunman is seen firing off a shot that hit 12-year-old Jada Jones. God kept my baby covered in. Ruthie is Jada's mother. She says her daughter did not have permission to be at Millennium Park and believes that the gunman was just randomly shooting into a crowd. I had no knowledge of my child being down there. She's 12. She wouldn't have been in Millennium Park by herself. Ruthie says her daughter was staying with her half-sister in Calumet Park, but took her to Millennium Park Saturday night. When Jada returned home Sunday night... The daughter's staying with the half-sister. And this is how a lot of these girls get violated. These young, even boys, in these communities. Because they're staying with the half-sister. is. All type of people over the half sister's house that don't nobody know. The mother don't know any of their backgrounds. Of course, many of them are thugs and hoodlums and hood rats and hoochie mamas. And then she ends up downtown in this mess. In this riot, basically a riot. At 12, and then she gets shot. So imagine... All the hoodlums and this one's boyfriend and that one's uncle and this one's play cousin and this one's baby daddy that she been around in her life. Bouncing from place to place, being here, being there, staying with this one, staying with that one. Even probably in her own house with her mother, this guy she met at the club, now live with her a week later, all the crap they do. This shows you how these little girls, the lives they live. And when they say something happened to them, it's hard not to believe them. Like, when you hear that these little girls, oh, yeah, when I was young, you know, so-and-so. She's 12. She's downtown in the middle of a riot, and she gets shot by some random guy. 
Ruthie says her daughter was staying with her half-sister in Calumet Park, but took her to Millennium Park Saturday night. When Jada returned home Sunday night, mom knew something wasn't right right away. She came home in pain, and I'm like, what's wrong? She was like, well, I was at the park with my sister, and I feel it hit my back. And I think I probably fractured something or anything, something like that. And I'm like, okay. I gave her a pain pill. With no inquisitiveness, no probing questions, no. Just, oh, you fell? Here go a pain pill. Back to my reality TV show. Back to Little Women of Atlanta. <laughs> or <laughs> Love and Hip Hop. This girl's literally got a bullet in her back. The mom gave her a pain pill. Now, the little girl's not being truthful about that she got shot. She's trying to she, she don't want to get in trouble. Little kids are strange like that. Who knows what this girl's thinking? She's 12 years old. But that's why you have parents. Figure this stuff out. And I'm not here to bang on this woman. This woman is probably just doing what she's capable of. She's doing the best she can. It's just not good enough. She came home in pain. And I'm like, what's wrong? She was like, well, I was at the park with my sister and I feel it hit my back. And I think I probably fractured something or anything, something like that. And I'm like, okay. I gave her a pain pill. When the pain persisted, Ruthie took her daughter to a hospital in Indiana, but was turned away because there were no beds available. The next day, yesterday, she brought her here to Comer Children's Hospital, where she was admitted. An x-ray revealed how close that bullet came to her spine. Still, it ruptured her kidney and went through her spleen. The cruel irony of the matter... <laughs> is that Ruthie says she moved her family from the city's Englewood neighborhood to the suburbs for safety's sake. I moved. This is our shooter being arrested. This is the shooter. Just randomly shooting people. Um, don't worry, Kim K will get him out in a few years. The jury was all white. <laughs> The judge was a Trump supporter. We demand a new trial. <laughs> um, I, it's I mean this stuff is just just mind boggling, man. Um, imagine the pain that girl had to be in. To have a ruptured spleen, kidney, bullet went through her kidney or spleen, lodged near her spine. All she got was a pain pill. Now, I get it. This little girl was being, not being forthcoming. I get that. That's what parents are for. Now, here's the thing. Where do we go from here? You have a hundred thousand kids in this city raised by raised like this. More than a hundred thousand. This woman, she moved to the suburbs. She did the right thing. Salute to her for that. She got out of this mean streets of Chicago. The problem is. Since gentrification hit Chicago, a lot of sun people have been moving to the suburbs. So by the time she gets to the suburbs, those cities are already infested with Chicagoans. If you notice, the funny thing has happened now. They're no longer giving you the murder numbers for Chicago. They're giving you the murder numbers for Cook County. Hit one if you notice that. Anybody who follows Chicago now. They don't do the murder numbers for Chicago any, as much as they used to. They give you Cook 
county's murder totals because the sun people from Chicago have been moving to the suburbs and those areas are getting heck of violent and the city's numbers are kind of flattening out because those people a lot of people a lot of those people are leaving and the suburban numbers are exploding those little towns in and around Chicago it's just like being in Chicago now the feel on the ground. If you're on the ground in one of those cities, you have no idea that you're not in Chicago. So what they're doing now is they're just taking the, the Cook County numbers. And that's Kim Fox's um, district, where, where she's the DA at for Cook County. She's not the DA for Chicago. She's the DA for the whole entire Cook County. And this woman, she thought she was getting away. But her daughter ends up back in downtown Chicago in a big morass of sun teens looting and pillaging and shooting each other randomly. And then when her daughter comes back home to the suburbs, it's just like Chicago. There is no solution. There is no cure. There's nothing you can do is that Ruthie says she moved her family from the city's Englewood neighborhood to the suburbs for safety's sake. I moved to the suburbs because of the, everything that's happening in Chicago. <laughs> and while police continue to investigate, Ruthie is just glad her daughter isn't any worse off. I'm so blessed. So again, her daughter, Jada, is in fair condition here at Comer Children's Hospital. Area 3 detectives are investigating, and you better believe Ray and Dina, they're taking a close look at that video. We're live in Hyde Park. Patrick Elwood, WGN News. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you.